Today's episode of the Bulldog Broadcast on the Field of 68 Media Network. I'm your host, Dan Dickow. Former player, it's been quite a while, darn near 20 years now. Uh, currently follow college basketball in the Zags in a number of different ways and try to bring insight to the Gonzaga program through different viewpoints. Today's someone I'm really excited to hear about his experiences not only playing against Gonzaga, but being a Gonzaga Bulldog. Currently playing in Britain professionally, Gino Crandall. Gino, how's your professional career going right now before we get into the Gonzaga stuff? Yeah, it's going good. Um, you know, obviously, strange time, um, you know, across the world, everybody adjusting and, and adapting to kind of the new normal that's been in place. But um, outside of a few cancellations here of games, it's going as good as possible. Uh, winning games out here, playing well. So no complaints on my end. Awesome. Awesome. I know there's so many Gonzaga players that are now uh, not only playing in the NBA, but but having their their careers uh, lengthened by going overseas. Josh Perkins, Silas Melson were, were guests on this podcast in the last few weeks. When you look at the things that you learned in your college career, not just at North Dakota, but also at Gonzaga, what were the kind of enduring traits that are allowing you now to have success that you learned early? Um, yeah, I think especially at uh, Gonzaga, just we're kind of taught to um, be students of the game um, in a sense. You know, we're, we're taught a lot of information um, and able to soak up a lot of things, whether it's through scouting other teams or through Coach Few, just kind of throwing in sets on the fly. Um, and then, you know, obviously Tommy with his um, international experience is always throwing stuff at us from that angle. Uh, so I think just that ability to be a student and, and to just soak up, you know, basketball related information has, has really allowed myself and then obviously others um, to be successful. I was talking to Jeremy Jones, actually, and he said something really similar to me when I asked him a really similar question. He said he just thinks being a student um, just makes the transition so easy um, from college to the pros, especially coming over here where the style might be a little different. Um, it's just, yeah, that understanding and that ability and, and that interest and wanting to of, of learning the game of basketball. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Co Coach Few and Tommy, their their scouting reports, their in depth uh, knowledge of the game, but then imparting that during practices and pregame walkthroughs uh, at the college level is top of the list. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've been on part of NBA programs that didn't cover things as in depth as the Gonzaga program. So it's a great way to learn. And if you take that to heart, which it sounds like you and a lot of other guys did. Uh, you're getting a leg up on your, your pro career early on. Now you're, as we mentioned, over in, in Britain, in, in Europe right now playing. Have you had a chance to watch this year's team? And if so, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I got to check out um, a lot of the non-conference schedule with those uh, midday games over there, kind of work out good for us guys over here. Um, I know a lot of the people were similar. I was on, you know, in group chats and on phone calls watching the team and um Myself included. I mean, everybody's just been amazed um, kind of at how quickly they kind of gelled together on um, the unselfishness they play with. Um, I think one thing that's really stuck out is, is kind of the quality of shots they get. Um, I think they pass up, you know, good ones for great ones all the time. And that's something you hear a lot of coaches talk about when you talk about really good teams is um, what, what, what are the, the looks that you're getting? You know, what do they look like? How do you get them? And I think, um, you know, throughout the course of 40 minutes, I don't know if anybody in the country does as good a job at getting the shots they want consistently and then obviously they have the skill level and the talent to uh to, to knock them down and make them count but just the unselfishness they play with the discipline um how hard they play everything really I mean there, there there hasn't been a box that they haven't checked in my opinion um you know early in the year there's a couple of things that are really unique to me about your your connection to the Gonzaga program we're going to touch on the North Dakota to Gonzaga factor in a minute but the Minneapolis area has become quietly a, a hotbed for really good basketball. You got the Jones brothers who went to Duke. Um, you've got Jalen Suggs, who's a freshman at, at Gonzaga right now. Chet Holmgren is the number one player in the country. Uh, he's strongly considering Gonzaga. Did you know Jalen at all? And did you kind of put a positive word in his ear about Gonzaga during his recruitment? And then if you know Chet Holmgren, are you doing the same? Yeah, um, I, I knew Jalen just, again, kind of being from the area, you know, watching him grow up, watching him play, being in, in, in gyms where he was the younger guy and wanting to play up with the older guys. Um, I knew him a bit, and then a lot of, of his support system, knew his family, knew his AAU coaches and things like that. Um, his, his AAU coach is actually a really good friend of my family. So I, I've been around Jalen, you know, watched him grow. And um, definitely, there was definitely, um, from the moment I heard that he was 
um, even interested a little bit. You know, I remember Coach Few and, and, and B Mike when I was there just asking me, you know, what do you what do you think about Jalen? Is he a guy that we should go after, or do you think he's gonna want to go, you know, go to one of those blue buds? I was like, no, you know, Jalen kind of does things his way, and, and his inner circle has always kind of done things their way. I think they'd definitely be interested in, you know, taking a route that's a little different than some of the traditional, you know, crazy highly ranked guys. And then you know, you add in the the just the the success that Gonzaga has had, you know, and they're kind of moving into that echelon, anyways. So, um, yeah, I was definitely in his ear from the moment that I found out, um, and I was super excited when he committed. Um, you know, there was the whole, is he going to go pro? Um, is he going to go to college thing? And, and, you know, I was on him a little bit about that, and obviously understanding that he was going to do what was best for him. But any positive words I could put for, uh, for him to come to GU and be a Zag, I did. And, um, you know, I'm super, super proud and, and happy with the way it's worked out uh, since. And I think all the coaches are happy, and he's happy, so it's been awesome. Yeah, I've been really impressed with his ability as such a high recruit. I mean, biggest recruit in Gonzaga history to, to, to blend his game into mm -hmm. Gonzaga's program and help elevate others uh, while impacting the game in the ways he does it best. Throwing ahead on the break, flattening the defense with his uh, creativity on, uh, in transition, uh, his, his competitive spirit, I think, has fit perfectly with Gonzaga. Now – you're a player who has seen Gonzaga in two different ways at the McCarthy Athletic Center. Uh, you, at North Dakota, you guys came in big time underdogs. You competed like heck. Uh, you and, and I believe it was Quentin Hooker, a backcourt member of yours at North Dakota, gave Gonzaga all they could handle. And I think you put up 25 26 in a tight game. What do you remember most as an opposing player going into that arena? and playing that night yeah you know I remember um just we were we were coming off a bad stretch I think Quinn Hooker had actually graduated the year before but we had a, a, a transfer Marlon Stewart from Creighton who was supposed to be another big time guard and, and ended up having a really good career there but um we had lost a lot of guys from an NCAA tournament team the year before so um we, we were going through a rough stretch in our non-conference and that was the last game before Christmas um you know and those are the games that sometimes can can sneak up on on you when you're you know kind of the, the favorite team um you, you're thinking about Christmas thinking about getting home um you know coming off of taking finals or whatever and we kind of just went in with you know we've got a nothing to lose mentality um and, and we were lucky that the the students were there or weren't there excuse me uh because of winter break because it, it kind of just when the students are there in the kennel it adds an entirely different dynamic to, to what's going on in there and what the team's capable of but yeah, we just came in with a nothing to lose mentality and um, made some shots early. And I think anytime you let a team stick around early and build some confidence, um, it's going to be a long night because I think at the college level, there are so many good players, you know, around the country, uh, regardless of, you know, high major, mid major, or low major, whatever it may be that, you know, guys are, guys are able to play basketball at a really high level. So if you allow them to get confidence early and, and see the ball go in the hoop and feel like they belong and feel like they can play that, you know, anything can happen. And unfortunately, uh, for me, not for Zag fans, but unfortunately for me, we were a few shots too short in the end. Well, I mentioned you did get hot and you did get comfortable. Uh, you hit a, a shot or a couple shots right in front of that student section. And anybody that knows Gonzaga basketball knows it's one of the best uh, student sections in all of college basketball. Do you remember any particular comments made or or situations where maybe you had some back and forth with with the students? Yeah, no, surprisingly not. Um, it was it was pretty tame um, during uh, my time at North Dakota for sure, and a little bit at Gonzaga. I was kind of known for for getting into it with uh, with with coaches, with players, with fans. Um, it was surprisingly tame that night, so I'm I'm gl glad for that because I didn't didn't want to make any enemies now looking back knowing that I would be there, you know, in a few months. Yeah, you fast forward about would have been probably about eight, nine months. And now you are able to be a grad transfer and kind of pick and choose where you want to go uh, based on obviously roster uh, openings across the country. Gonzaga was the spot that you ended up with. I thought it was a tremendous decision. Obviously uh, it worked out well for, for both GU as well as yourself, but you weren't, able to step off foot on campus until literally the last minute how how hard was it to get up to speed so quickly because I, I remember going to practices early that year and you still hadn't stepped foot on campus and, and everyone knew you were coming but you had to finish this required schoolwork to get there 
Yeah, it was, um, you know, it was a little bit of a challenge. Um, I would say the probably the easiest part was just a, a chemistry standpoint with, with the guys. Um, everybody was super welcoming um, and, and just made the transition as easy as possible. You know, I think my first practice, um, I think I got in at like midnight, like flight landed at midnight, probably got settled in, you know, went to sleep at 2 a.m., had a physical at eight, you know, practice at 930 or something like that. So I'm just drained and guys just keep passing me the ball in every live segment. I'm like, man, what? What in the world? I'm I'm tired. Like you, you guys got it. So I came here. I didn't want to shoot as much as I did at North Dakota, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was the guys made it super easy. Um, a, a really smooth transition. Everybody's looking out for me and as helpful as possible. Um, probably the the biggest adjustment was just trying to find my place. Um, that was probably the hardest part with, you know, so little time. I think I got there, and you know, a week later we were scrimmaging Michigan State, and then a week after that, you know, we 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 were we were off and running and playing games. So. Um, it was it was easy um, in the sense of, of a chemistry and just a bonding with the guys. Um, and, and as far as, you know, scheming and, and understanding the style of play and things like that, it, it, it took a second. But, um, you know, it, I, I wouldn't change much of anything other than maybe getting hurt um, was probably the one thing that, that set me back a little more. But, um, yeah, it was, I mean, I enjoyed my time so much that I'll, I'll, I'll take those bumps along the way. What is it about Gonzaga's culture uh, and guys that are players as well as the coaching staff that allows a grad transfer like yourself to get acclimated so so easily? I mean, you look at uh, you're a grad transfer that had a lot of success. Jordan Matthews, Byron Wesley, Ryan Woolridge last year, Aaron Cook, I think is doing a really job, nice job this year. Mm -hmm. What is it, in your opinion, as a grad transfer that made it easy? Um. I think just the fact that, that everything um, culture related is from the top down, you know, if, if there's something that, that, that relates to the Gonzaga culture, few believes in it and, you know, the walk-ons and managers believe in it. Um, it's, it's just a top down thing. So you're just immersed in it um, all the time. Um, everything culture related, whether it's, you know, helping a guy up on the ground, whether it's the next pass mentality, whether it's, um, you know, helping out on defense, whether it's, being there helping out in the community and, and, and going to events and, you know, putting your best foot forward when you're meeting, you know, sponsors and donors and things like that. Um, it's just, you, you're just around it all the time. And, and every, every guy, again, from few down to, to, you know, the last guy that you would think about, everybody wants what's best for the best for the next guy, excuse me. Um, everybody thinks that their success is, you know, tied into to your success and it is, and it shows in, you know, the results that, that that's a, a way of thinking and, and a, a style that that works. Coach Few, you mentioned being at the top and kind of his perspective trickles down to, to the rest of the program. He's a future Hall of Fame coach. Do you have any unique stories about Coach Few, <laughs> whether it was him giving you a hard time about something or being sarcastic to someone else? Because everybody who's been around the program – has different Mark Few stories that mm -hmm. uh, you just kind of shake your head and you just kind of laugh about it and you just walk away. I think um, I think personally for me, the funniest one um, probably is, is Coach Few would always um, just throw out comments about me just being really well-spoken, really intelligent, um, you know, just a smart guy, as, as, as he would like to say. He'd be like, yeah, you're just, you know, one of the smartest basketball guys, one of the smartest guys I've ever coached, ever been around. And um, we were um, – for the first game of the NCAA tournament, we were playing Farley Dickinson, and they had a guy, I think Christian Edge was his name, I want to say, and he was shooting like high 40s, maybe 50% from three on the year. Um, and we're scouting, we're going through walkthroughs, um, and he's like, anybody that goes under, that goes removed on a flare or a pin down or whatever, like, you, why would you do it? You got to be the dumbest guy in America. And... Um, <laughs> you know, sure enough, just the, the first play we're, we're walking through and Joel, when he when he was uh, on the scout team, had a bad habit of like everybody's going like 50 percent and Joel's going like 80 percent, you know. And so he kind of gets some separation because I'm thinking we're jogging and um, I just go removed to try to get through the screen really fast. I don't fight over the top. I just go removed and he catches it. And I'm there in time. He doesn't get the shot off. But just the fact that he was able to catch the ball that I went removed, you know, Coach Few stopped practice and he just like. Well, everybody, there he is, the, the dumbest, smart guy in America. And I'm just like, you know what? I'll take it. I just, I just got to eat it. You just said 20 seconds ago not to go removed, and I go removed. So I just, I, I just got to accept that one. But he was, 
I mean, he was always just saying something. Yeah, it's just like the sarcastic. You know, he's not a guy that's going to yell at you and, and make you feel bad, but he'll say some things, and you're just like, yep, I, I got it. I'm, I'm kind of bad for that one. That's a great story, and, and I can picture that perfectly because I've seen that. That's happened to me on plenty of <laughs> occasions when I was a player back then. Uh, it was great to hear. So, Gino, I appreciate the time. Uh, best of luck the rest of this season over in Britain, uh, both individually as well as for your team so that you can continue your career. Uh, continue watching those Zag games. Be active on social media because I know you've got some great takes on, on, on this year's team when I followed you. So thanks again for joining and, and best of luck. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it a lot.